Hi, this is Katie. And this is Nathan, and you're listening to Queen's Podcast. Kind of. <laughs> Hey y'all, if you're a longtime listener of the podcast, you know that we are on summer break right now. But we didn't want to leave you haul high and dry. Over the years, a few of you have mentioned that you'd like uh, like to share our show with your kids or with a classroom. I believe the children are our future. <laughs> but you couldn't because of the language, because we are saucy. Yeah, we curse like sailors. So mm-hmm. this summer, we're taking a few of our classic episodes and making them a little less saucy for y'all. So enjoy Queen's podcast, rated PG-13, the summer series. Cheers, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Nathan. Hey, Katie, what's up? We are back, and we are ready to talk about the rest of Isabella of Castile's life today. So, pick up where we left off. Yeah, we were last uh, left Izzy and Castile in 1474, and she was just crowned the queen of Castile. So, I mean, she's got no problems, right? This should be, like, a happy time for her. Easy breezy right? beautiful. But her niece, Juana the Bastard, has um, got Portugal on her side. Yeah, and she's got that creepy guy, uh, Afonso of so Portugal. So creeps. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he's engaged to, like, baby Castilian, you know. He's engaged to Juana the Bastard. Yeah, and she's, like, young. Like, super young, and he's, yeah. like, freaking old. She's 13, and he's 43. And he wants to be the king, so... So they go to war. <laughs> the king of Portugal is creeping, and his supporters in Castile, they meet up with the 13-year-old Juana. This poor girl. She's yeah. just a pawn. She really was. It's a really kind of a sad story. Probably not even her dad's daughter anyway. Yeah. Just kind of being moved around for and power. And so Alfonso of Portugal and Juana the Bastard are married, and they they proclaim themselves king and queen of Castile, and she's queen of Portugal. And hashtag poor baby Juana, she didn't like, do we know if she even wanted to be queen? No, like, and much less Morty married to a guy that's like 30 years older than she is. Old enough to be her father. Yes. Like, not... Ugh, history sucks. Sometimes. Yeah, and I, I saw that you read that the Archbishop of Toledo actually supported the rebels. Yeah, which is so f***ed up because he had been like a big supporter of Izzy beforehand, but then once she became queen, he decided he wasn't getting enough kickback. He wasn't so it was getting like enough a, it spoils. It was like a Julius Caesar Brutus moment. So like he just flipped. He flipped. He did, a, he did a Michael Cohen. And he flipped, he flipped, he flipped, he flipped. <laughs> Topical! <laughs> um, so anyway, Isabella sets out to do what she's done really well so far, which is like make friends and get make Get people alliances. on her side. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And she sets out on horseback and starts raising troops of her own. But he, she was able to like ride out on her own and raise her own troops and do her own thing independent of Ferdinand. Yeah. But she didn't need his help at all. Well, because she was queen of Castile. It was yeah. her land. Yeah. And he was just um, helping out. I mean, he definitely had selfish tendencies in there, but she was the queen. She was the one everybody was looking at. Exactly. And, and she, she rides from town to town to town convincing people, because these people aren't dying to go to war. They've been at war you know there's been civil war in castile for like a generation now yeah and so she has to really convince them like because i mean just like a farmer in the field he doesn't care if he's under portuguese or castilian rule it doesn't really yeah he doesn't care and so she has to like go out and she's um she's politician and she's shaking hands she's kissing babies she's being like Can I count on your vote? <laughs> but she she would stay up all night writing letters, stay up all day writing from town to town campaigning. And it took a toll on her health because in 1475 she suffered a miscarriage. Yeah. And she must have been pretty far along too because they, they knew it was a boy. But if she took any time to recover, it's not documented like at all. Yeah, she, she was right back out there. She was busy. <laughs> so the first battle was in July 1475. It was Portugal and Castile, obviously, meeting on the battlefield. And Ferdinand's leading the army at the time. 
And he sends Alfonso a note saying, okay, look, dude, we can send our armies out at each other and hundreds of people can get killed, or we can just go ahead and just do one single combat and be done with it. Like, person to person. Like, yeah. Alfonso and Ferdinand, let's fight this out, and then whoever wins is the winner. And Alfonso is in his 40s, which is very middle age, if not later mm-hmm. in life then. And Ferdinand is, what, like early 20s? Yeah. So he's so like, it's... Alfonso's like, um, I think I'll stick with regular war. Yeah, uh, may not be evenly matched. <laughs> I mean, but like, how many lives would have been spared? Yeah. Like, if they would have just done that. Thousands. But. but anyway, long story short, this war went on for, like, five years. It was yeah. the War of the Castilian Succession. Yeah, it was fought on land and sea. Um, Castile won most of the land. Portugal won most of the sea. But luckily, there, more people live on land than in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> so Under the sea. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That was a Little Mermaid reference. Gradually, the battles start becoming, like, less and less and less. Towards the end of the war, Izzy find out she's pregnant again. Yeah, and it was only she didn't have that many pregnancies whenever she was with Ferdinand at. Up front. Yeah, three pregnancies in eight years for a royal company. But she was out uh, campaigning couple. and shit. Though. She was busy. She didn't. <laughs> they didn't have a lot of downtime together. She didn't no. have a whole lot of time to get pregnant. And when I know whenever they were together, it was like boop, she pregnant. <laughs> yeah, and so in 1478, she has a baby boy that they named John. A lot of the people who were on the fence about who to support were now supporting Izzy because, okay, she's got an heir. A male heir. She's got an heir now, and we know she can have more babies. And she, you know, people that were like, well, we kind of want to still be Castilian anyway. This helped them make their decision because Juana and Alfonso hadn't consummated their marriage yet because she's a child. So thank God. I know. <laughs> and so there was no proof to be like, oh, they're definitely going to be like a fruitful, fruitful marriage. Yeah, yeah. And be yeah. able to pass on the lineage and, and all that. And also because Alfonso's like getting up there in years, so maybe he can't have any more kids, you know, mm. so it made a lot of people go, well, that made our choice easier, you know? Yeah, exactly. So meanwhile, back in Aragon-ish area, Ferdinand's dad dies. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a really good relationship. Yeah, so. and he was a really good dad that taught him how to rule and taught him yeah, how to do everything he properly. Kept, a, kept him on a tight leash. And so, you know, if there's really nothing documented about how Ferdinand grieved for this, but he must have because they had a close relationship. Yeah. But now ki- king. But now he's king. He's <laughs> king of Aragon and Sicily and Navarre. It this time in history is so convoluted and complex. It so, is jam packed. So full we of are stuff. gonna um, skim over a lot of stuff because. Ugh, I know, I know. <laughs> There's just so much. And if you think about it, like, we talked about Catherine de Medici. She's at this time. And we yeah, talk about a lot of people, time. a lot of big things are going on right now. But then, um, so poor baby Juana is just hemorrhaging support. Because, I mean, they couldn't compete with the golden couple now who are ruling Aragon, Sicily, and Navarre. Having They're babies. Up and, coming, yeah. up and coming. They just couldn't compete so people are just like leaving her side left and right whenever Izzy gave birth to John Juana's husband had their marriage annulled ouch <clears throat> so she went from calling herself the queen of Portugal and Castile to Juana the bastard again yeah and Alfonso was like get thee to a nunnery oh I don't he, like Alfonso creepy I, old man cause he creeps yeah and he was just like you need to go to a nunnery. Izzy and Ferdinand did give her the option. They were like, okay, you can go to the nunnery or you can marry our son when he grows up if he wants to marry you, which just seems like... Uh, so she's going to be like 18, 17 at this point. She's and like, he's like he's a baby newborn. <laughs> if he wants to marry you. And she was just like, nah. No, nah, I'm good, brah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go be a nun. And she... <laughs> She took. She decided being a nun over dealing with these people anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, I, could, I wouldn't blame her at that point. So she took her vows and became a nun. And Afonso, the king of Portugal, became a monk and gave the crown off to his son, yeah. John. And then um, Afonso actually died before he could make it to the monastery. So, so um, he was almost there. He was almost a monk. <laughs> but then he died. Yeah, and it was like shortly after he handed off the, cr- the crown to his son, too. So it was like, oh, well, convenient timing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so that exits 
two major players in Izzy's life yeah, so far. Two big of the resistors that she So now she, had. she can start really being queen. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. Be right back. Back to Izzy. She, Izzy's now like the queen of She's Kessie. the undisputed yeah. queen of So let's celebrate with having another baby. Yeah, Woo! let's get pregnant. Um, so she she has a little girl named Joanna or Juana, like depending on how you're saying it, which seems odd considering <laughs> that they just kicked poor baby Juana to the <laughs> hashtag poor baby Juana to the curb. But yeah, it's like, and you're gonna name your daughter after? Maybe they her. felt bad for her, so I don't know, uh, okay. or maybe it was just a really common name. Whatever. Probably. Izzy is a mother. She like she realizes early on that her kids are gonna be important players in the European landscape. She just proved herself on the world stage by, like, getting all this land and getting all this money and power. Mm -hmm. So now she knows, look, I've made a name for myself. She wants to make a dynasty. Yes. Is what she wants, honey. So she is super involved in their education and their upbringing. Um, Ferdinand's family wanted John to go be educated in Aragon, and Isabella was just, like, absolutely not that is not even kind of going to happen. And we've talked about in other episodes, a lot of time royal children are sent off like to their own mm-hmm. households or to be raised in um, as wards to other like royal families and everything for their education. And that is not at all what Izzy and Ferdinand No, Izzy actually appointed Italian humanist mm-hmm. to come and like tutor her children yeah. one-on-one. Her and, children like... were going to be in her sights. Yeah, and I looked up what it, what the humanists like <clears throat> believe in and what they teach. They emphasize language, so reading, mm. writing, grammar, uh, communication, like how to like give speeches, and when you're on in the court, how to act and yeah. how to, you know, stuff like that. Religion, obviously, obviously, <laughs> arts and history. So that's what they really like centered all of their, which is on what we pretty much still learn today. Yeah. Too. <laughs> And it's really cool because since she did keep them with her, she knew they were going to have a good role model. And so she was like, these kids are going to see me. And even if I die young, they're going to know like a good she role model. She was present in their from lives. From the beginning. She was a bit of a helicopter mother. Yeah. Like a little yeah. bit. Um, the education for the girls is really noteworthy because they got one. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's true, though. <laughs> like, we mentioned Ka- the Catherine of Aragon episode, yeah. how well-educated Catherine was. And this was in a time when, like, even really affluent families didn't necessarily even teach their daughters how to read. It wasn't important at the so time. So the fact that Catherine could write letters in Latin was bonkers impressive. But it was, it was just she knew how important it was to get her children to read. And at this point... Like, in the Renaissance time, it kind of became, like, fashionable to teach your daughters, like, make sure they have the education on par with the men. And I think, personally, that Izzy started this trend. Yeah. You know? Because no one else was doing it like she was. And And then after that, Catherine of Aragon did it with her daughter. Yeah. Mary. Yeah. And and it was done with Elizabeth. And it was just, it kept getting... And her, her we'll get to it later, but Margaret of Austria was um, her daughter-in-law. And Margaret of Austria then went on to educate, like, Anne Boleyn and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So she had a ripple effect all throughout European history on women being smart. Yeah. Anyway. So let's get back to, you know, all the fighting's over. And it's time to get everything back in order. And basically, as he's like... Come on, Spain. Now let's get in formation. (laughs) And she's basically going to do everything that her predecessors didn't do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because Spain right now, like, I mean, it's chaos yeah it like was bonkers there was they were broke as shit. there was crime just like it was very much like a mafia state kind oh, of yeah. like oh yeah rich people would just go kidnap other rich people and hold them for ransom and, and there like, was there, nobody to there was no police the law yeah. yeah it was like all kind of just it was kind of like the wild wild west even yeah like, and castile's poor as shit, yeah you know because they've they been fighting Portugal. They've been fighting <laughs> Portugal, and her brother just left her like a sandwich, you know, when it yeah, came to did. like Castile, the state of it. So she's like, "All right, we need to make some reforms. We need to get hold on our people, and we need to make some money, honey." She, I read that she made some of the positions in court. Uh, they were like 
you didn't have hereditary. To do, yeah, it used to be hereditary, but they were like, if you want to partake yeah. in the court, you don't have to if you don't want to. to the yeah, nobility. but you get this title and you still get the money. Yeah, for and it. so and the she nobility, was like, no. Yeah, it was like, no, thank you. She was like, no, people are gonna earn their titles. Exactly. People are going, and she hired a bunch of um, people not from the nobility. To exactly. to like help her write laws, and, and just... they were scholars. They were really intelligent people yeah. too that were doing that. And she wasn't just relying on these stupid nobles who didn't really care about anything except themselves. It's basically, she went in and cut the fat out yeah. of like mm-hmm. these lazy nobles who didn't want to even partake in anything and just wanted the job to just say, "Oh, I work for the queen." Well, what do you do? <laughs> I don't do anything. <laughs> you yeah. know. Bull. Well, the nobles were like. When they first heard that their their do nothing jobs were getting taken away, they're like, "Well, how are the people going to know what you want? Know what you're saying? If you remove us from it, how are we going to tell the people what you think?" And she was like, "That is a really good point." <laughs> and so she started having every Friday she would have a town hall meeting. And that's what, pretty. That's pretty whatever, like progressive for that, that time. That is super progressive. And I mean, she traveled all over their countries, so it was like wherever she was, it was Friday. She was like, "All right, tell the people, I'm they, here. They can they can come tell me about their grievances and stuff." And I'm sorry, I just think that is huge. You yeah. don't hear about a lot of. I mean, I can't think of any of the kings or queens that we've talked no. about so far. They just every Friday, no matter what they were doing. Come on down. Come tell on. me about what happened. Tell me what? about your grievances. Tell me about what's going on. Communication. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> huge. So. Yeah. Of course the commoners are going to love you now because they feel like you're listening. Exactly. Like, she was real good at getting people to love her. Izzy ends up fashioning herself like the good old religious icon Joan of Arc. Yeah. She had a thing for her. Yeah. She. I've, I feel like that is a recurring theme with a lot of our queens. Like, Zenobia had a thing for Cleopatra. Yeah. You uh-huh. know. There's a role model. Cleopatra had a thing for Isis. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. like, she picks Joan of Arc, who was a warrior. Religious. Saint, you know, yeah, so. Yeah, religious warrior. I guess she wasn't a saint then at that point. No, she was still. She yeah, was yeah, a yeah, religious yeah. warrior. Yeah. So. The Izzy, economy just starts getting back on track. Everything. The economy's hum- booming. The corruption is down. Um, she's getting to know her people. Like she's doing a damn good job. So far, so good for so Queen she Izzy. needs to have more babies. Yeah. And in 1482, she gives birth to twins. One is their daughter Maria, but sadly, the other twin was a stillborn girl named Anna. The Spanish Inquisition <laughs> is not a great part. Of <laughs> no, Isabella's it was, legacy. Uh, no, it wasn't a really good part of it, but. So, I'm not going to try to justify the things that she did, but it's also important to think, okay, why? Why did she do the things that she did? She was trying to centralize power. She was trying to, with religion, uh, homogenizing your religion. She's thinking, if everybody is the same religion, that's one less thing for people to fight about. We've been fighting like crazy for the last few, you know, decades, so it, let's have one set of morals, one set of rules. And it's also easier of... to control everybody if mm-hmm. they're all the same religion. That's what sparked it. Um, so she's like, we just all need to be Christians. And it's around this time that the Pope starts calling her and Ferdinand um, the Catholic. The Catholic monarchs. The Catholic monarchs. Ah, <laughs> you're so Catholic. <laughs> Remember, there are a lot of Muslims in Spain. Primarily in South Spain, Granada, Granada was kind of where they mm-hmm. were pushed to. But the Muslims, they're separated. They have their own central power. They have their own armies. The Jewish people, however, they live among the Christians. They live among the Muslims. And they are, a lot of them are bankers. And a lot of them work for the Christians a lot of the Christians owed a lot of money to the Jews. And they weren't protected from that. They, they weren't. They weren't. Like, the Muslims had their own thing going on, and the Christians had their own thing going on, and the Jews were just trying to make it, and they never... They weren't They weren't fully accepted by yeah. either. So, the history of the Jews in Spain is super complicated, and I actually did, like, a whole part on this in our outline that I cut out because it just 
it's, it's just it's just so lot, complicated. It goes back to like the eighth century, seventh, eighth century. Yeah, no, it's it really starts. I mean, probably even before yeah, then. Yeah, but like where you can really put your finger on starts in like the seven hundreds. So um, this is huge sweeping overview of yeah. a very complicated situation. So first. Spain um, was under these very, very early Christians, and they hated the Jews. And so the Jews mainly went to live in Muslim territories. And they were cool for a few hundred years, but then the Muslims started getting pissed off and blaming the Jews for everything that was going on. It and didn't it, rain today. Yeah. Blame the Jews. You oh, know, my like, God. And then there was, like, a bunch of big massacres and, like, thousands and thousands. So it's, like, 5,000. It was 5,000 Jews that were killed in one weekend. Yeah. It, it, it was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. So then most of you know came back to Christian territory. And so now fast forward to the twelfth century, and for a while living under Christian rule was okay in air quotes, but I... but they were I mean they were still considered like second rate citizens. Yeah. Um for instance, they fought in the Spanish Wars, but the Jews had to wear clothing that made them easier to see. Yeah, basically it's like neon flashing lights. Like, shoot me, yeah. shoot me, shoot yeah. me. Yeah. Like, horrible. But, so everything was okay. Not great, Ish. but okay. <laughs> and then Izzy's great-great-grandfather, Henry II, took control, and things got real bad for the Jews. This is whenever you start to see, like, the Hitler-esque, the wearing of the yeah, badges. Yeah, they had to wear the yellow, the, I don't know if they were yellow stars, that's just what I meant. It was yellow something. It, it was, was a some yellow, kind of yellow badge. badge. And it started to become illegal for... Because I think in the Bible it does... It's called usury. And it basically means charging interest on loans. And a lot of the Jewish families were in um, banking. Bankers. It was their yeah, job. That's what they were and doing. And so it became illegal to charge Christians um, interest. And I'm sorry. Can I get a loan from the Catholic Church then? Like, can I get my mortgage? <laughs> Can I get I my to, mortgage to the yeah, Catholic Church? I want to refinance. That right sounds. Um, <laughs> I'm going to write a letter to the Pope. <laughs> hey, Pope. I'd be like, usury is a crime. So, <laughs> so please tell my credit union <laughs> <laughs> that my mortgage is paid for by the Catholic Church. Thank you. Love ya. So, under this guy, a lot of the Jews converted, or and they're called like conversos. Yeah. And um, and then a lot of Jews also left. And a lot of the converses were looked at as shady, and the people didn't like them. Because or they didn't trust they them. Racist. They were like, they were like <laughs> did you just convert because we've threatened to kill you? And I mean, the answer is yes. yes. <laughs> but that's not fair. That's so unfair to be like, you must convert or we'll kill you. Okay, we'll convert. Did you just convert only because... You were afraid of dying, and it's like, yes. yes. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> uh, so Izzy's relationship with the Jews was a little rocky, to say yeah, the best. It wasn't as bad. Like, her father had actually... Um, oh, yeah, her dad. Had but her dad had done a lot of good things for the Jews. Like, he got rid of some of, like, the really, really bad rules. Like, um, he just wasn't as hard as this Henry II was. So mm -hmm. Izzy comes, and I'm sure just all the Jewish people are like, new monarch, how's this gonna go? Oh, help me. <laughs> uh, um, so she was like, okay, I think these conversos, they, um, they need to prove they've converted, or they need a GTFO. They also called the conversos crypto-Jews, which just makes me think of like a James Bond type. Da -da, like, da -da, da -da. Crypto juice. Da -da, da -da. Yeah. I'm sorry. That... <laughs> so she hired, she ended up hiring these people and they called them the Inquisitors and was like, let's, let's make sure to be super nice to them while you're getting them to convert, okay? And the, the Inquisitors were like, oh yeah, 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 totally. We're yeah. totally going to be chill about this. Yeah, and then they weren't. Ugh. <laughs> So another big part of um, what's going on at this time is the Reconquista. Izzy had gotten all these Jews to become Catholic, Christian, and she's like, all right, this is stupid. We can't have this whole big chunk of Spain being this whole other religion run by this whole different company. Yeah, company? she's already the company. <laughs> uh, this whole other company no, run by this whole other government, like... Yeah, it's no. a whole different set of rules. We want, we want Granada back. Also, Granada was called the Eden of Spain. 
Like so it, it was like the bougiest part of Spain. It was some prime real estate, yeah. is what I'm getting at. And in 1482, she's like, "We're taking that shack." So now let's look at the uh, Muslim and Christian relations in Spain because we um, just talked about the Jewish and Christian. Now they were, they were bad. I mean, we could just leave it at that. <laughs> We could theoretically just leave it uh, yeah, at. We, it was bad. Yeah, we could. And it, like I was saying earlier, it's like since the 700s that, you know, Islam came moving through North Africa and then up the Iberian Peninsula mm-hmm. to south of Spain. And then all the Spanish rulers trying to squash them and push them out. And yeah, them, and, and it's just going them. back and forth, back and forth. The, um, they called the Muslims the Moors yes. at this time. And so... It would be the Moors have the bulk of the power, and then the Christians have the bulk of the power, and then the Moors. And now we're at a place where the Moors really only have Granada. And, like, I just picture it as, like, Granada is just, like, this thing that Izzy can't get out of her head. Mm -hmm. She's like, I have to have that land back. And she thinks it's going to be, like, easy peasy. Oh, she's thinking she is going to... She's got the rest of Spain. She's going to run in there, be like... We claim this for Spain, and everybody, there's going to be a little bit of kerfuffle, and then everybody goes, ah, oh, fine. Okay. She you was, can have this. She was perhaps mistaken. Mer- mer- she was mistaken. Uh, she was mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> so, but this is like, this is like her ancestors have been fighting this yeah, battle. Yeah, this is like a This is like an old, thing. like, mm-hmm. it's not like something that just popped in our head one day of like, oh, I'd really love to have Granada. This is like... She feels like her ancestors are, like, pushing her to it, you know. So this is when we get into Izzy, Warrior Queen, part de. Part de. Oh, and going on crusades at this time was... It's the it thing. Yeah, it's like, on this cover of Vogue magazine, we have the Crusaders of Spain. Exactly. (laughs) It was, like, just so in style. And so it's like, they had a crusade in their backyard... (laughs) <laughs> How convenient. This war is going to take 10 minutes, but it took 10 years. <laughs> um, and so it, crusading was the it thing to do. She was the it queen, so she was in it to win it. She would put on her armor. Very Joan of Arc-esque. She, very Joan of Arc-esque. Um, she would put on her armor, and she brought her whole family crusading with her. And was like, hey, troops, how's it going? This is my fan. Which had a huge impact. She involved gonna... them in, like, the, one of the key aspects of being a ruler, which is war. I think it's pretty cool that she she was not sheltering them. She was like, heavy is the head that wears the crown, and you're going to see some shit. Yeah, and it you're gave You're never going to be spoiled little kids, And you know? it gave the soldiers and the, the families of the soldiers to see the royal family, like, they and are on, meet them. It's That's a big deal. She took care of her soldiers, too. She um, had these state-of-the-art... I don't know what state-of-the-art for the 1400s are. <laughs> Sticks and stones. But they had these state-of-the-art um, medical tents set up, and they were called the Queen's Hospitals. Lots of leeches Yeah, I don't know. There was, it it probably was a very it was horrible, but for the time she was trying to take care of her people. Yes, and it was very appreciated. And they, they were called the Queen's Hospitals. The Queen's Hospitals, not the King's Hospitals. <laughs> the Queen's. This girl gonna take care of you. Even and you, pregnancy didn't stop her. Didn't stop her. Won't stop. Can't stop. You know. No. <laughs> She's just gonna keep making bacon babies. Mm-mm. Bacon babies. Bacon babies. In bacon her babies in her uterus. belly. <laughs> bacon babies in my belly. <laughs> I mean, they call, it a bun. they call it a bun in the oven. Well, yeah. There ba- you go. Making some babies. So <laughs> her daughter named Catherine of Aragon, <laughs> episode six and seven. You may have heard of her. Maybe you've heard of her. I don't know. She had this child while she's on crusade. That's where she came from. That's where she came she from. She came from a, she's a battle baby. <laughs> so, anyway. So her let's rela- t- Yeah, let's talk about her relationship with... Ferdinand. He had a lot of like mistresses, yeah. side pieces. I don't think he never had like where no. it was like he had an official mistress and it was like a position at court. No. No, she's super religious and adultery is in the Bible as a sin. And I think also because since she didn't grow up because, you know, her daughter, Catherine of Aragon, because mm-hmm. she knew kings took mistresses. But because Izzy grew up in ye old dusty castle. And she was sheltered. And and then whenever she hit court, her brother was, like, probably asexual or something. Mm-hmm. She didn't witness this. So she... Nobody told her, your, your husband that you adore, 
is going to have all these side pieces, yeah. you know? And so, oh my God. I took God. a toll on her. It, I mean, in public, she never showed any sign of it. But there are some contemporary reports that, like, there's some guy that wrote a letter to some other guy being that was, like, close in court being, like, they had this huge blowout after it. And Izzy, by the end of it, was just, like, sobbing so hard we thought she was going to make herself sick. Like, she... Poor thing. I know. She took it really... I mean, I would too. I I would not be happy about it. Ferdinand had two bastards, (laughs) at least, before he even married Izzy. But I guess she just sort of thought... Oh, unmarried boys will be boys. Uh, you know? Wrong. No, she was wrong. <laughs> um, I just wish somebody would have told her. I wish she would have been prepared. That was a hardship that she had to endure. Luckily, she was making that dynasty. She was. She was not going to leave anything as a question mark. No. She was like... She's doing the exact opposite of the people before her. She is doing... Yeah, she (laughs) learned from her predecessor's mistakes. She is like, I am getting them that great dynastic matches from the get-go. And she literally married every single one of her kids off as a king or a queen. Yeah. Period. Start with her daughter, Isabella. Let's make friends with Portugal. We've been fighting with Portugal. So she's, she's she's engaged off to the heir... That was whose name is also Alfonso because and it's his grandson. then their son John sweet little baby John they had him engaged to Margaret of Austria and she's the daughter of the Holy Roman Emperor score. so score and she's also like I can't wait to do an episode on her just because yeah, from like the Anne Boleyn episode I love her so much so yeah that's great Joanne their daughter they marry to Margaret's brother who's also the son of the Holy Roman Emperor. His name is Philip. In later life, he's known as Philip the Handsome. Philip the... Yeah, he's not a great guy, but he was... <laughs> everybody, like, everything you read about him, it's like, oh, he was so proud and annoying, but, but he was good looking. <laughs> <laughs> when he first came to Castile, they were like, he looks like an angel. Like, that's Good how lord. Oh, I my mean, God. His portrait does not... No, like, it doesn't. I've looked at the portrait and been but, like, the what? But whatever. Oh, you know, different, diff- different strokes, different folks. Different different centuries, different taste, you know? <laughs> um, so, Maria was the other daughter, and she was first engaged to the King of Scotland. Uh-huh. And then that kind of fell through. Because Scotland and England were always warring. They knew that Catherine of Aragon was going to be married to England. So, so she was it would like, be a good match. So she was like, let's... Unify it. Let's unify them, help them keep peace by marrying them to two of our daughters. Sadly, that didn't work out, but it gives that child like a sense of responsibility, knowing like, okay, one day I'm going to be a great queen of this yeah, country. You they, know? Have it, they, have it, they have their path already made out for them, and they're like 10 years old. Exactly. <laughs> so... 1492 rolls around. And, and this is a, like a, okay. It's there's, a big year. There's a <laughs> lot of stuff happening in 1492. Oh my God. So the whole, Reconquista, the Inquisition, there's a lot Christopher of. Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus. It's, it's like just, all in this one jam pack. So hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! We're about to get into it. So the Reconquista came to an end. After a decade of fighting, Izzy and Ferdinand finally won and Granada surrendered. January. She has her Eden of Spain or whatever. Yeah, they finally. And the Muslim population, like, it didn't seriously dwindle down at this time. A lot of people moved. A yeah. lot of people died. A lot of people were taking slaves and, like, sold off. And, and like, that was really sad. It's not great. At first, they were just like, you can stay if you don't start any <laughs> But a lot of them moved to Africa, including um, their king. Oh, my God. I didn't put it in the notes, but I want to talk about it now. It's like... The King Muhammad, he, when he was leaving to go to Africa, his, his mother was going with him. And when they stopped to, like, do their last look back at Granada, his mother said something along the lines of, like, you weren't man enough to keep it, so why are you even looking at it now? Ooh. Burn. Ooh. <laughs> oh, right? Like, come on, let's go. You weren't man enough to keep it, so keep it going. But anyway, so... Scandal alert. And this is like, this is completely, I had to do some serious digging to even find any information about this. So who knows if it's true, but there were enough like deep dive. Okay, let's put on our tinfoil hats. Put on our tinfoil hats. (laughs) So it's possible 
that Ferdinand had an affair with the Muslim king's daughter, Aixa? I don't know how you... A-I-X-A. Aixa? Aixa. And then that Aixa had a son, and she called him Miguel Fernandez. Fernandez literally means son of Ferdinand. Uh, I couldn't, like, the main place that I found information on this guy is, like, genealogy websites. So there was definitely a Miguel Ferdinand, uh, Fernandez who was raised by this, like, super rich family in Spain. Uh, and, like, but their fishy. parentage, his parentage isn't really known. And Ferdinand would obviously not claim him because I mean, his he, wife would lose her claimed all his other bastards, but could you imagine Isabel being like, you had a child with a Muslim? Yeah, you know, she just, would have a problem with that because she, she was trying to she was trying to get rid of Muslims and Jewish people. A child that was the son of um, a Christian king and the son of a Muslim princess. I mean, there could be there could be an uprising later in his name. So they, if he really did exist and being Ferdinand's son, it makes sense that they hid him away. Uh, Yeah, I I don't think they would even let Isabella know because she would have like she would have marched there and killed the baby herself. She probably would (laughs) have. She probably would have. Oh my god, (laughs) she's crazy. So yeah, all the they have Granada now. The Reconquista is completed. She has finish the job of her ancestors. So then they end up doing the Alhambra decree, they, um, which is like a yeah. formal saying of, okay, now all of you crypto Jews, you can't be cryptic anymore. Can't be. <laughs> can't be crypto Jews. <laughs> is that just secret Asian man? Yeah. We the were- Alhambra decree. Yes. Yeah, so they had sent out these inquisitors to look into the crypto Jews, and they were being all cryptic. Surprise, surprise, the inquisitors came back with some bad news. Yeah, these these Jewish people are probably secretly practicing their Judaism in secret. And they're trying to start revolts and turn all your people against you. And, and they're trying to kill you. And, <laughs> and poison like, your children. And Izzy's like, clutch my pearls! <laughs> we must get rid of these Jews! <laughs> And it's awful. It's awful. It's awful. It's not great. Um, but she was kind of like, like, let's take a closer look at this. Let's try to get to the root of the problem. But then uh, the Pope and her husband were not trying to get. They were like, the root of the problem is that they are here. Yeah, let's they were. They were pretty bad. The Pope was backing all of this. Like, yeah, push the Jews out. Push the Muslim people. And out. at the same time, as he's like. Push the Jews out. Push the Muslims out. He's also like, oh my God, Izzy. Yes, Izzy. Oh my God, Izzy, you look so good. We love you so much. And Izzy, Izzy's you're really, so Catholic, Izzy. And you know, Izzy's like, not all that down with Pope Daddy Borgia. She didn't, she, yeah, the, the Pope at this time is Lucrezia Borgia. Wow, we're having so many crossovers with other episodes. Yeah, uh-huh. Lucrezia Borgia's dad, who was corrupt as all get out, was yeah. the Pope at this time. And she knew he was corrupt as all get out. She's not dumb. Yeah, she didn't sit there. But still, like, oh, yeah, he's great. the Pope. Yeah. And if you're the most Catholic monarch and the Pope is wanting you to do something. And he's Spanish, too. So yeah. he's he's totally down with her G.O.D. Yeah. <laughs> down with G.O.D. Yeah, yeah you, you know, know me. me. Yeah. Yeah. So I really think, like, all of that and then, like, a real honest fear of God caused her to like agree with the expulsion of the Jews and also money because she's not perfect yeah and that was the thing is once they like expelled you out of the country where did your land and money go exactly oh to the crown so in March 1492 the Alhambra decree was issued and it stated that all the Jews even those that had converted if they thought you might be a crypto Jew had three months to get out. In that three months, they were under protection of the crown. So even though they've said, okay, you're the enemy of the state, for this three months, if anybody harassed them, they, Sorry, but they could get it. But still. Telling somebody in that time period, you've got three months to leave. Oh, That's oh, oh, not oh, a lot oh. of time. It's not a lot of time now <laughs> to move to another country in three months. But no, they couldn't take their horses. How? <laughs> What are you going to... Walk? You're literally going to make these people wander the desert on foot? 
Hello, we've already been there. <laughs> Jews wandering the desert on foot. Not a Ten good idea. Commandments. Katie in her biblical references yeah. today. Her Lots his, of Moses going on. His, Moses was the Ten Commandments guy, right? Yes. That was his husband, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. She's a biblical scholar, Katie. <laughs> biblical Moses scholar. was the Ten Commandments, right? That yeah, was his bag, right? That was his, that was his yeah. shtick, right? <laughs> okay. They couldn't take their money. They couldn't take their weapons so they're just on foot with no money no protection i mean this is a death sentence yeah you know what and obviously at this time whenever if you were a jewish banker who had all this money and stuff mm-hmm. then you the christians didn't have to pay back your loans they didn't have to pay back oh any, you, did, you christians interest, no you interest. borrowed two million dollars from them who cares and so they were like okay in this three months time that you have to go out try to sell your things but now the market is so saturated, like, okay, they're trying to sell all their furniture, but there's so but many other people trying to sell all their furniture. furniture. Mm-hmm. You might get, like, a quarter of what it's worth, you know? Like, it was just a... I mean, this is a huge understatement. It was a bad situation. Yeah, really bad. And it's worth mentioning at this time that Isabella changed her confessor from this really, like, lenient, lenient like, really chill More guy. More, like, hippie guy. Yeah. To, to this, like, fire and brimstoner. Crazy. Yeah. Not a good idea. The, dec- um, the Alhambra degree was not revoked until 1968, <laughs> Nathan. No. 1968. I read that and I was like, are, that was like a hop, skip, and a jump ago. Like, <laughs> Yeah, this was the 1400s. Yeah. This is 1492 and it wasn't repealed until 1960. I mean, I wonder obviously. I the civil rights movement had something to do with I that don't, i don't know i'm sh- i I'm, I don't I'm, think they I'm were grasping i don't think far. they were enforcing it up to 1968 no. i think just around 1968 they were like oh, it's time uh, for us to get rid of this kind of racist we could i i don't want to talk too too much about this because we could easily dedicate a whole episode oh, to yeah. this Uh-oh. if you want to learn more or three episodes i know <laughs> if you want to learn more about the expulsion of the jews from spain go to stuff you missed in history class They're they fabulous. have they have a really great episode on it <sighs> anyway so let's move on she's at peace for the yes. first time in 18 years she has the country back in control she thinks Catholic. she's done a service for getting all the jews out and the Pope at the time, Pope Daddy Borges, views her as a saint. He's, and yeah. she doesn't really care for him, but she's like, cool. But whatever. she's like, cool. Like, um, and nobody's questioning whether or not she's like a fit to rule type of lady. Yeah, <laughs> They're like, oh, has, get out of her way because she's going to take your land. She has proven herself <laughs> as a ruler. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, for the, the first top of the world, looking, looking down, down on creation. creation. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. Like she is really in her prime, feeling great. So Thanks. then this guy Christopher Columbus rocks up. If you went to school in America, you know Christopher Columbus. <laughs> if you didn't go to school in America, he's pretty big deal. <laughs> BFD. You. The story goes that Izzy traded in her jewels to fund the journey of Christopher Columbus. Fake news. That's totally fake, though. Because, I mean, they had all this... They had, like... All the money from All the, the money right from now. From the Jewish and the Muslim. What's up? I could see her, though. Because, yeah, I, as children, we're taught that Isabella sold her jewels to fund Christopher Columbus' voyage. That didn't happen. They no. had plenty of money. She borrowed from other countries. Um, she raised taxes. It was fine. But I could see her being dramatic, being like, I believe in this man, <laughs> and I will sell my jewels <laughs> to fund his voyage into falling off the face of the earth. I used to be dripping in jewels at Guanza. <laughs> no longer. No longer. No longer. <laughs> but no, she she had money. She It was It was fine. Fun fact, Christopher Columbus actually first came to them. Well, first of all, he went, he's... He went to a lot of people. He's Italian, so he went and asked Italy for the money yes. first. He was living in Portugal, and they said, uh, no. Help which is an Italian is a no. Um, <laughs> it's a no. And he was living in Portugal, so he went to Portugal. And Portugal was like, um... What's, what's Portuguese for no? No. Uh, I don't think it is... Uh, no, I don't have no idea what Portuguese is. <laughs> I'm going to Portugal in two weeks, so I really should learn should that. find that out. No, yeah, because you need to tell somebody no means no. No. <laughs> no, I have Google Translate. You can just... <laughs> it makes it all so easy. Something that we didn't really talk about in the Spain-Portuguese war, we did mention that Portugal won more of the sea battles. Yeah. 
So in their treaty of peace, Portugal got like basically ownership of like the shared sea between them and Spain. Ah. So Portugal was like, no, we don't. We've already got control of the water. We don't need somebody else. Christopher Columbus went to England and asked for money, and Henry the Seventh was like so tight with his money, and he was and just like, no. absolutely not. So then he he went to Spain in 1486, and they said no. Then, and in America, in school, you had this little rhyme to help you remember. It was like Columbus, in Fort, C- Columbus, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, blue in 1492. 1492. What if they had said yes in 1486? What would the rhyme be? Columbus sailed the River of Sticks in 1486. <laughs> so what Christopher Columbus was looking for was a quicker route to Asia and India because um, we've discussed in lots of shows, like, the Silk Road. Yeah, Silk Road. Portugal had, like, they couldn't go on, like, in the South Atlantic. Spain couldn't go in the South Atlantic because Portugal won that part of the uh... ocean. In their peace treaty. So they were kind of stuck. So they were kind of stuck and they couldn't really get to India and Asia because then they also have to like go by Muslims and they're not super popular with the Muslim population (laughs) of the world right now. Nope. And so if Christopher Columbus is like, I want to find a route to Asia on like westward. Because in school we were also taught at this point everybody thought the earth was flat. No, everybody knew it was round the earth was round at this time. <laughs> they just didn't know the Americas. How long it were was. there. Yeah, they thought there was just was. a huge western sea of nothing. And he was like, no, I think the earth is smaller than we think it is. And the western sea isn't that long. And I'm just going to bloop, 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 go around the world and be Love in the Asia. Sound Love bloop, the sound be in India. And there we go. And so Izzy was like, we got a surplus. Back then, like, a pound of cinnamon was, like... That was the other thing in India. It's not just the silk. It's, it's the spices. It's the spices. A pound of cinnamon was, like, $10,000. Yeah. Like, something... It's ridiculous. I'm it's guessing, ridiculous. but it was something ridiculous. Fund that expedition from the She beginning. just took a while to get everybody. Yes. And exactly. Ferdinand said no. He said no mm-hmm. so many times. And then she was just, like... He was, like, this guy is a showboater. He doesn't know what he's looking for. He has no idea if what he says is true. And she's like, okay, we're not going to take a dime from Aragon. It's my money. She was like, <laughs> I'm only going to take it out of the Castilian fund. She's not taking it out of her joint account. Yeah, she's, she's take- not taking it out of the joint account. She's <laughs> taking it out of her private my money yes. account. <laughs> and so he sails off. After about two months, they find land. The new world. Izzy and Ferdinand, really just Izzy, has started what's called the Golden Age of Exploration. So Columbus returns in March of 1493, and he has a ton of gold, Mm. and he has all this new land, and then Izzy had made, like, a contract with him at the time. It was like, hey, you get to keep 10% of of what you you find, which now she's like, why did I say that? 10% (laughs) is high. She's like, he would have taken five. What did I do? (laughs) But I guess they didn't expect him to find... What he found. A yeah. whole new world. And I mean, that's for people that aren't from America. You know, like Native Americans are sometimes still called Indians. That's because he thought he hit some weird... He he landed Indian in the island. Bahamas. Yeah. And he thought he had hit like an Indian island. So he was like, oh, these are Indians. And it's like, no. No, those it's are... It's so what... stupid that we still call them that sometimes. Yeah, no, they're, they're Native Americans. Native Americans. Nothing to do with India. They were here way before we were. Anyway, in total... Columbus made four journeys to the lands that he discovered that and are now all, like, they're now all Spanish te- territory. Yeah, the, the Bahamas, Cuba, Central, South America, they yeah. still speak Spanish today. Yeah, parts of Central and South. I don't think they they speak English in the Bahamas now. Yeah, but, but in most of those countries, they yeah. speak Spanish. Yeah, in Cuba and a lot of South and Central America, yeah. Christopher Columbus rolls up to present, um, here's what I've found in the New World. And he shows up with, like, seven or eight, like, slaves, like, Indians. Natives, Native yeah. Americans, Nathan. <laughs> Izzy was appalled. She, like, sees these Native people in chains, and she's just like, you need to bring them home and free them right now. And he was just... He was not. Christopher Columbus was not prepared for her being so angry about him Yeah, because slaves. from his perspective, she had been enslaving the Moors. Yeah. And so, so why am I... I'm enslaving 
this is, but to her, she was seeing the Moors as the enemy. So that and these was okay. were these people. These that are innocent people they that don't she know doesn't about even Christianity. Know. They don't know. And um, yeah, he was. He had even written in a letter to like a colleague or whatever that was like, um, these people are so peaceful, they would be so easy to enslave. They're so eager to please us or whatever. And so these poor people are just like trying to be good hosts. Yeah, they're like, and hey you guys, take, welcome. And, and they literally take, take all their gold, all their yeah. land. Yeah. White um, people suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, and he's like, but they're so easygoing. They're so happy to please. Why wouldn't we take them as slaves? And she's like, cool, if they're so easygoing, why don't you just take them back to their homes, teach them Christianity, and then they can be Christians and not hate us? Hashtag Catholic monarchs. Hashtag Catholic monarchs. (laughs) And Chris was like, okay, I'll return them and their gold to their homes. And she was like, I mean, but... The gold can stay. The gold can stay. <laughs> <laughs> so we discussed a little bit about how she had, like, planned her children out to build all these huge dynasties. Mm-hmm. And that didn't really pan out the way that she wanted yeah. to, sadly. Um, her son, John, her only son, mm-hmm. he ended up dying in 1497. I read from, like, horse riding accident um tuberculosis and then i i read that he overexerted himself in the bedroom yeah, yeah. john had always had real like he had never been super healthy he's yeah. always been like a little bit sick and i read somewhere that like um he was so in love with his wife margaret of austria that like they just couldn't keep their hands off each other and he even went to like confession being like i feel so dirty because all I can think about is having sex with my wife and like his confessor had to tell him like no that's a good thing (laughs) that's a good thing you're married to her but there were like court physicians that were like we should only let them see each other like once or twice a month or something because they were like he's always been a frail health and he is he cannot uh, keep his hands off her. He's going to make himself sick from, like, overexerting himself. So that's where the rumor started that he died from too much But it was... That's a pretty awesome way to go. Yeah, but it was almost most definitely tuberculosis. Okay. Yeah, which is a lot less fun. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever they were informed that he was sick and about to die, everyone was preparing for Izzy's daughter's wedding. Mm-hmm. The other Isabella. Izzy. Yeah. Because, <laughs> of course... They just want to make it fucking confusing. And Ferdinand ended up rushing to be with John. Because it was um, a big deal. Is the sec- Isabella, the sequel, was about to marry... <laughs> Into Portugal, the her daughter. This is daughter Isabella's second marriage to Portugal because her first husband died, so they just married her to the next in line like, of Portugal. Okay, here's the next one. But yeah, she's got so much to prepare. It's not they didn't really have courthouse weddings then. When two monarch were marrying each other like that, it was like it was a big deal. Yeah, so she couldn't just rush off. No. They couldn't postpone this wedding. It was a matter of peace, you know? Yeah, and so Ferdinand ends up rushing off to meet John, and then he writes Izzy back being like, oh, everything's everything's fine. He's fine. They, yeah. they over-exaggerated how sick he was. He's fine, but that was a bold-faced lie. Liar! This kid was so sick. But yeah. he didn't... It was almost... They it, have a really good relationship. It was almost like a, a lie of kindness. Yeah. He knew she couldn't be there. And he what's knew, the point? In, what's the point in stressing her out more? She may, he may as well be like, calm down, he's fine, so she can like take her mind off of it. Yeah. So while it was a lie, I think it was a lie of generosity or yeah. a lie of kindness. He was trying to be nice. Yeah. Um, and he ended up dying yeah. in October fourteen ninety seven um, with his dad Ferdinand and his pregnant wife Margaret by his side. Yeah. Oh, that's so sad to have like a pregnant wife and I then. Know. And this distraught Izzy for the rest of her life. Like, yeah, her she wasn't a, with him when he her died. Her health took a downturn at this point. It's noteworthy to mention, again, how tight-knit this family mm-hmm. was. Like, because you hear a lot about, like, these royal families, and it's like one of the kids die, and everyone just moves on because they hardly knew each other. Yeah, they met him, no, like, five times. This was a very, very close-knit family, so she's heartbroken. Yeah, she's done. She's absolutely heartbroken. John's last request was that everybody watch over... His wife. So she, like, dives herself into that. Into Margaret. And, like, Margaret had always been really, really popular with the Spanish people. So 
immediately Izzy was like, yes, I'm going to take care of her, send her here, she's going to have her baby here. Puts and her in a different headspace, she's taking care of people Gives whenever her something she's to do. grieving. Yeah. You know? And so she ends up you know, Margaret the, ends up having the baby, and it's still it's born. Still, oh, it's a stillborn oh, daughter. Oh, this was so like this. This moment in her life, Isabella's life, just like it's boom. a dark. It just went dark nose time. dive. So then, her eldest daughter, Isabella, which was probably her favorite daughter, just because her and Catherine of Aragon were a lot alike, but her and this Isabella, uh, daughter Isabella, were like. They looked alike. They talked alike. Like, they were just it's her oldest, very, too. very similar. So she's now queen of Portugal. And she's convinced my family is having all this misfortunes because I married into the Portugal family and Portugal didn't kick out all their Jews. Oh, my God. I what is know. it with the Jewish law? Why, why are you so obsessed with them? And she ended up, like, convincing. Her new convincing, husband's so in love with her. She convinced him to do it. All the Jews. He was like, okay. Sadly, daughter Isabella dies in childbirth, and yeah, not only the not only the baby. Well, no, the baby lived about three years. Oh, it did, and then died. Oh, yeah. So, like, she. Oh, maybe it's also a sign that God wants you to quit being racist. <laughs> but Jesus. at this point, that happening with her daughter it was like a one-two punch. Yeah, you know, like, like it was like bam, bam. She's she, done. Her health, like, super starts to decline, and I mean. Are you surprised? She's so full of grief. And now her heir is this creepy girl that we talked about keeping her dead husband's body, but not at that time. Not at that, yeah. But still, but also Joanna, now she's the, the she's in line for the throne now. Joanna's next in line, but the thing with Joanna is Joanna's the least like Isabella. She's Catholic, but she's not like ride or die Catholic. Yeah. She's a little bit like some of these things are kind of silly. She's obsessed with her husband, but her husband's kind of an arrogant face you know and Isabella I think Isabella could read people like that and I think the moment she met Philip of Austria she was like let's not give this guy any real power I don't like this yeah Yeah. so that is also weighing on her that she doesn't want to hand Castile over to somebody who doesn't have her same kind of convictions you know and some guy is probably dying of cancer yeah, so we can say grief killed her, but also probably cancer. <laughs> um, also, so she's like, she just takes like this nosedive in health. And the people of Castile are like distraught. There yeah, were, this like, is the first ruler that they've had that has been really strong competent? and powerful and competent. Yeah. Uniting the people and they're just like, what, what are we going to do? Because they're like. Okay, is there going to be another war of succession if she dies? It, they didn't. Ferdinand was in his older age was also starting to act a little bit power hungry, yeah. and I don't think I think everybody liked him, but they liked him because he was Izzy's husband, not because not they because he was a good because of leader. his own. Yeah, and so I mean, it was like from letters from the contemporaries of the time, it was just like the country was. In panic, like what are we gonna do? She was the rock. What are we gonna do? She was the rock. Yeah, and she wasn't dumb. She had to start writing out a will at the time. She wasn't gonna be like her brother, who just like said things but never wrote it down. Again, she she did the exact opposite of her predecessors. She She was like, nope, I'm gonna do the exact opposite of that. So she started writing her will like about a year or two out before she died. Yeah, she was not gonna leave this earth without giving people a basic guideline of what's gonna happen when you die. Yeah, like especially when you have a lot of money and power. Exactly. <laughs> so um, she could read people. She could tell. She was like, "My daughter, I don't think is gonna be a strong leader. Her husband's kind of a <laughs> face." So in Izzy's will, she states, um, "Daughter Joanna will rule Castile unless she doesn't want to." And in the case that she doesn't want to, her um, Ferdinand will be her consort, and until her son is twenty years old, because oh. because um, Joanna had a son named Charles, who would then go on to unite all of Spain. Yeah, but that's weird. I've never heard any monarch getting an out like that. Like in my will, this is my. This is my successor. Unless they don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. It's cool. Husband. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, she specifically made sure not to mention Joanna's husband. She was specifically, like, 
let's make sure this guy gets no power. Nothing. She also um, requested that Catherine of Aragon's dowry be paid in full. ASAP. ASAP. <laughs> which it was not. But she, I mean, she's looking out. She's like, I want to make sure my daughter can be an effective ruler over there and it not be all like muddled with um, money. Yeah. Anyway. So her little, in her will, she had like an ode to Ferdinand. She went ham on her love of Ferdinand in her will. Like it was normal at the time. Because now when you think will, it's very just like legal documents. Yeah. Back then they were kind of more of like your your last will and testament. Like what you're leaving for the world to remember you. And to my dear husband Ferdinand. And so it was very common. You had to be like, to my dear husband Ferdinand, I loved you so much. But she, she gushed. <laughs> she went on and on on about. Just, Firstly, she said she would she would get he would get half of the annual incomes from the New World, which is a lot of money. Yeah, because they that could have all just gone to Castile. Yeah, and, and now, they yeah. they like robbed a bunch of Native American like places and took all their gold, and half of it went to Aragon, which yeah. is huge. She praised Ferdinand's ability to rule and said that he had eminent virtues. What does that even mean? Like, they were just super lots and lots of virtues. They cheated on you a lot. Sure, I don't know what great virtues. <laughs> she left him all her jewels, so he would be so he could look at them and remember her every day. That is so sad. Uh-huh. But in reality, he probably got rid of all of them except like one necklace or something. She she put in her will that she requested him to never marry again. And Blah. on her Sorry. deathbed, Sorry. I hate to laugh. on her deathbed, she even asked, like, I want you to never marry again. And she told him it was because, not for jealousy, but... Be- Succession, right? And he was just like, totally. And there are witnesses for him saying, like, no, I won't remarry. And he did. He married, like, <laughs> eight months later to, a, like, a child. Like, he, was a, he was a little bit of a deep bag. No, no, he wasn't great. Other noteworthy things in her will, just, like... Bits of charity. Like, um, she asked that money be donated to, like, poor girls so they could either um, have a dowry or have enough money to, like, buy their self a place in, like, a monastery or something, which is crazy. Like, it's not even girls, like, this certain poor girl I know, just, like... Girls in general. There are poor women make make it that's, right. That's really huge that for is that time. Because not only were we talking about education and educating women now, now she's giving to the needy women too. Yeah. So it's like she recognizes that. She asked that the natives in the new world be treated kindly and never, ever, ever be enslaved. Um, she asked at her funeral that people didn't spend money on mourning clothes and the money that they would have spent on that instead be given to the poor. See, I would love that. Like, yeah. that's something great. It's like, don't wear all that fancy funeral. Donate that. She asked that all her possessions be sold and the money be used. Because um, during the Reconquista, a lot of Christians had been taken as hostage. And so she asked the money from her possessions sold be spent to get those people out of captivity. Oh, wow. Right? She, she like, did a lot of really she good She had a shit. lot on her mind. Yeah. Like, this tells me, one, that she had a charitable spirit, but also that she had some guilt on her mind. Yeah. She and she's did. thinking, if I do these good deeds, like in my last will and testament, maybe that'll erase. Erase that nasty yeah. part of my history that I yeah. had. So, sadly, on November 26th of 1504, she ended up passing away. Um... Ferdinand was there and her best friend Beatrice. Remember Beatrice from episode one? Yes. That was like her best friend from BFF, ye old from Dusty me. Castle days? Yeah. Beatrice was by her side. Get it, B. She requested to be buried in Granada because girl is upset. Yeah, She's like it was, a it was like... of the bone. So she died in Medina del Campo, which is about like it would be like a five hour drive from there to Granada. And I mean like Granada at the border. I have no idea like where in Granada. So it's like a five-hour drive and a 34-hour bike ride. But <laughs> it took a couple of weeks. But Ferdinand arranged the coffin to be yeah. driven across the country so people could, could pay their out. respects. And... But actually, um, I didn't put it in the notes because I just read it earlier today. But, like, there was, like, um, a flood. And, like, actually, like, four or five people died trying to get her to Granada. 
because like the roads, they're, they're not roads like you have now. You know, they're like oh yeah, dirt roads yeah. that then turn into mudslides and like stuff like that. So people tried to come out and like pay their respects, but and Ferdinand didn't accompany the coffin. Oh, surprise, surprise. Was, she did finally make it to Granada. She had requested to have like a simple gravestone, but what she got was a big statue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did not listen to that, and that's fine. I think I believe it's still there in Granada. So So let's let's talk about her legacy before we wrap this up. She was not perfect by any means, but she set a precedence that women could rule. Yes, effectively. Like that we're and effectively, exactly. Like we can rule Without we're not all more this drama, with yes. all this stupid shit happening. Under her grandson Charles, all of the Spanish territories were finally united. It wasn't Castile and it wasn't Aragon, it was Spain. Now and keep in mind like all these she married all her children off and she had this dynasty. Religious dynasty. Mm-hmm. And that's what we still know her in America as today, especially mm-hmm. with the Catherine of Aragon being her daughter. And she showed that educating her daughters wasn't a waste of time and it could make them effective leaders as well. Consorts and everything. And she also helped found the United States of America. Yeah, she, <laughs> she started the golden age of exploration, and our country wouldn't be here, you know, like it is now. No. If she hadn't. Thanks, Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so, for giving me a place to stay. <laughs> Izzy. We love you. Cheers. Cheers to Izzy. Thanks for listening, guys. Mwah. So, thanks for listening. If there's something you want to hear, just, like, hit us up. You can email us at queenshistorypodcast at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter. We're at queens underscore podcast. We're on SoundCloud and Stitcher. And follow us on iTunes at Queens Podcast, all one word. Follow us on Facebook. Thanks, guys, for listening. Cheers. Bye, girl. Clink, clink. <laughs> Mwah.